Okay, welcome back. Got a little different video for you today. I got to give you some instruction, try to explain something to you. Normally, I'm, this is the only video I think I've ever made where I'm having to explain something that doesn't involve how a project is put together. This will be a little unusual for me. Anyway, what I want to explain is this analog digital world. Now I want to switch screens. That looks pretty good. I've jumped into a canvas page. I'm going to use some of the uh, graphics in here to talk to you for a minute. Hopefully I can do this in about five to eight minutes. And let's start off with how we were able to, let's, say, let's start off with uh, Mother Nature just a little bit. Mother Nature, um, if you think about it, is almost strictly a analog world. There's very few examples of digital information stored in Mother Nature. So the sounds Mother Nature makes, the lights and and in and, and chemistry, the way molecules are arranged, it's pretty analog. It's pretty, there's lots of just variations. Uh, there's some ex exceptions would be for like uh, maybe crystal structure. You might consider if it was a salt crystal, you have a, a sodium and a chlorine atom and they repeat themselves. So you have a zero and a one, right? sodium chlorine. Now that's kind of a vague digital metaphor perhaps. Or you may be looking at the strands of ACTs and Gs on a on a DNA strand. That could be considered a form of digital information. But generally speaking, it's it's all analog. So the world we've created though around us, at least nowadays with our technology, is we're taking all the information and we're making it digital. So we gotta go from analog to digital. And oftentimes you've got to make that digital look like it's analog, even though it isn't. That's kind of what the discussion is. You know, our rational minds, for some reason, well, actually, a big history behind this, but I won't go into. Um, with the uh, this evolution of information and how we quantified it, you can look up uh, Claude Shannon and others if you want to read more about it. Anyway, we started off with what we see right up here on the the uh, canvas page, we took a little recap. We took um, a little project that you built and you're trying to make a light, an LED go dim. And that would seem to be pretty easy in the analog world because in the analog world, well, if you want to make it dimmer, you just send maybe, maybe if five volts was maximum, you would just send, you know, two and a half to make it half as bright and then one and a half to make it you know, even less bright and so on, and turn it off when it's at zero. But how do you do? How do you do that in the digital world? How do you, if all you have is zeros and ones, how do you get these in between values or make it look like they're in between values? And what we see here with this pulse width modulation, basically the trick is, uh, I'm just going to use an illustration for this. Is what we're going to do is we're going to turn, we're going to turn on and off or go from high to low, or go from 1, which it normally is like 5 volts for Arduino, or 3.3. 3. That's what this line represents. We're going to be flickering these on and off at different rates. Of course, if they were always on, if they were, here's like a little graph. Let's see, I was at 0 here and 5 volts here. This doesn't have to be, that really does read 5 volts. I don't even know what that looks like. It could be an N. <laughs> Not used to writing with a big marker. That's kind of funny. So five volts could be 10 volts, 100 volts, one volt. This will vary, but some maximum and then a minimum. So if it could always just be a five volts or, or one and always going just straight across like that, or it could always just be going across to here as zero. What you see up here in the on the canvas page is if we flicker this on and off a bunch of times, for part of the time, let's say this whole batch right here, let's say this took one second. If it's 50% on and 50% off, our, well, some of this trickery has to do with our own eyes. If we, it's, this thing's gonna be flickering on and off so fast that it's gonna appear as if it's at half the voltage because half the time it's off and half the time it's on. So the deception here is this flickering effect, our eye won't pick up unless it's really slow. If we go on and off, actually we went on and off 
Here in my example, I said we went on and off four times in one second. We probably would see that with our eye. But these on and offs are happening really fast. We cannot see this flickering effect. All we see is the light going dim or uh, brighter or what have you, depending on how, how much how off it is. So down here we have it off quite a bit. It's mostly off and on just a little bit. So this is going to look like it's really dim. So that's the trick for this one. The next one is a little more complicated. And you have the second part where you are going to get this RGB to go on. Which has three LEDs in it. And each one is different color. And we can do a little color combos to make even lots of different colors. I'm going to go down to this graphic. The trick on this one needs a little bit of an explanation. Put the paper on here. Now it's not critical that you you get this exactly, of course. Just get the idea of it that we're by the nature has a lot of analog. We like to make a lot of digital things. There's reasons for that. There's advantages for to, for digital signals going through wires and then then analog ones. Uh, you don't you don't lose the signal um, like you do. analog signals like to deteriorate a lot of noise a lot of um, <laughs> let's not go into all that I really want to but let's keep it simple here so up on the screen here I've got some bits and bits is the most basic piece of information um, a single bit is a zero or one so that's what I've got up here so for a single bit we can have two pieces of information. We can have a zero or a one. Now the one could be five volts or zero volts, or it could be it could represent the letter of the alphabet if you wanted to, or it could be on, off, or it could be yes, no. It's just that with two bits, uh, it's one bit, a zero and a one, we can take a look at we can break information up into two pieces. And there's an example of this right down here. Here we have our signal, an analog signal that's changing from zero to five volts continuously changing if we were just to use a single bit we could break this information down into on excuse me on and off and we would lose all this information in between which is not good right that's not this is not ideal to lose maybe this is the temperatures and all we're getting is the maximum and the minimum and everything in between is gone so if we take this idea though and we expand it and we say all right let's add another bit so now we have two bits um, we can still collect the original bit of information, plus we can get a little more information with the extra bit. And we can hold uh, four pieces of information, or we can break down that analog signal into four pieces and four chunks. And I think I've got an example of that. So here we've broken it down into smaller little increments. And we can only get basically where these plateaus are. All the information in between we lose. So we can know what it is right here, and right here, and right here, and right here. But everything, all the information between is lost. Just like here, but uh, in this case, at least we picked up a few more pieces of information than we did in this case. Now if we continue this idea down and add another bit, another bit, and when we get to four bits, we actually call this, um, actually this illustration here only goes up to 12. We can actually go up to 15 if we add 1, 1, and then go 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That'll take us all the way to 15. This one cuts off at uh, 12. So if we have four bits, imagine now we have all these places to put information with two bits. We could have yes or no, but now we can have yes, no, maybe, uh, kind of. Or we could do animals in a zoo. We could do giraffes, alligators. We can have a lot more different kinds of drafts, or we can take a signal and break it up into little segments. And we can actually look at those um, benchmarks or whatever, or whatever you want to call them. And everything between, of course, is gone. We don't have any information for that. So the more uh, bits we add, the more we can break down an analog signal, the green line, and break it into little pieces, these little benchmarks right here. We're still losing everything in between where these lines are, all the information in the, in the middle is gone. But the more we break this down, the more this stairs will start looking like this green line. And if you go all the way up to a byte, which is 
we're going up to 8 bits. Now my illustration here doesn't have um, all that on here, but if we if we hold this much information, we can break this thing into uh, how do we how do we know how much information we got? We got two for the first one. We got a second one. We get four. We got a second one. We get eight. We had another bit. We'll get sixteen. You'll see a pattern here. We had another bit. We can break up the analog signal into 32 pieces. We get another one, we get 64 pieces. Another one, we're gonna get 128 pieces. And one more, we're gonna get 256 pieces. All the way 256. Now these analog pins on our Arduino, I've got one right here, pull it around. Um, they could read, they could break things down. They can break analog information down all the way up to 10 uh, 24. So they actually have two more bits. They're going to go to five. Whoop, I went off the page there. I didn't even know it. They can go up to a five, twelve, and then up to ten, twenty-four. Okay. And if you get more and more into Arduino, you'll see these values. You'll you'll see uh, working with a part, and all of a sudden you'll you'll see a ten twenty-four or two fifty-six. You know, we wonder, oh, what is that? What, is, what are these numbers I keep seeing? Well, they have to do with the number of bits that we're using. All right, so let's make a long story short. Summarize all this. The trick we're, the information we're getting from a sensor is going to be in this analog form. All these different values from, say, 0 to 5 volts. And in order to convert that to a digital, we have to make these little steps. Each step is provided by the bits we use. The more bits... Um, the more steps we can make, and if we make a lot enough steps, then these steps will start mimicking the shape of this green line. So that's basically how that trick works. Okay, so I think that's good enough for now. Again, you don't have to have this perfect knowledge down of this. Just kind of get a feel for it. That's kind of how learning works. You go, you hear it first time. You go, ah, I don't know if I quite get that. But then you hear it again. And then you pick up more things and then the ideas start to solidify. So that is it for this video. We will see you in the next project.